you know, I don't have a lot of college degrees and all that stuff, but one thing I do have, I hope I have, it's got, it's given, got me this far anyway, is a little bit of common sense. Well, common sense is not on the menu in Richmond. It's just not there. Common sense tells me that if a man or a woman or whoever wants to commit a crime in a building and they walk up and see a sign that no guns allowed, they're not going to walk, turn and walk away. Then I can say, oh, I can't go in there, I've got a gun. Stupid, totally stupid. I have a concealed weapons permit. I carry a weapon with me everywhere I go. And I can tell you, infringing on Second Amendment rights is something that it, 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 I despise the idea. I don't know what they're thinking in Richmond. I don't know what they're doing. But as someone told me, when you elect clowns, you get a circus. And that's exactly what we have in Richmond. And I can only tell everybody in this room that can hear my voice, wherever you are, we're here because we didn't vote. You got an election coming up this year and next year, we can change this thing. But these resolutions, uh, they're good, but they're not binding. The only way this is going to change if you go to the ballot box in November and vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mrs. Vanooch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on December 17th, I stood on that side of the podium as a supervisor-elect, and I committed to the Rock Hill constituents that I would always support and defend their Second Amendment rights. And I want to tell you that I'm reaffirming that commitment today and standing up for the law-abiding citizens of Stafford County and their constitutional rights to keep and bear arms, and that includes in government, uh, county government buildings. I, like Mr. Snelling said, rebuke what's happening in Richmond, and we must push back. The time is now. We have to stand up, and we have to push back as a community. The ability to protect yourself and your family and your personal property is a God-given right, and I will always do what I can to defend that right as long as I sit in this seat. One of the worst, one of the worst feelings as a woman is to be unprotected and to feel defenseless. And one of the even more worse feelings is to be defenseless and have a criminal know that you stand there defenseless. So I don't want anyone in Stafford County to ever have that feeling and have the right to own a weapon, bear that arm, and protect yourself and protect your family. Currently, the world seems to be upside down. And, and gun rights, as well as police, but that's a separate issue, gun, gun, people that believe in their right to keep and bear arms are under attack. In Virginia, it's gotten ridiculous. They have passed some laws that are just phenomenal, and they're all against gun rights. And one of the worst things they did was take our right and let localities restrict it. What other right do we have where the locality can say, well, you know, we don't do the Fourth Amendment, you know, in, in Spotsylvania, uh, and we don't do the First Amendment in Fairfax. We don't do that. We don't divvy it up. It's a right. We have that right wherever we go. And uh, so the resolution is really more of a, a way of telling the people in your locality, look, you know, we, you know, we stand with you. We understand your right to protect yourself and your family is paramount. That if you can't do that, nothing else much matters. And, uh, and it also sends a message to Richmond not to pass this kind of stuff. Don't attack our right to protect ourselves. That is the most sacred thing we have. Uh, but it's, it, is good, it has gotten to the point where, you know, some localities, I mean, some of them have just jumped in, and Northern Virginia have jumped in with both feet. Everything they could do, they did. Even though, take for example, Alexandria, they had almost very rarely to have any kind of violent crime there. Oh boy, we've got to, you know, we've got to go crazy with this. We've got to ban guns everywhere imaginable. And no exceptions, even even not exceptions for, for even uh, some police, much less citizens with permits that don't commit crime. Uh, the uh, the rate of uh, permit holder committing a crime or losing a permit for any reason, which may include a crime but may not include a crime at all, is 0.15 of one percent. It's that minuscule. These people just don't cause problems. So anyhow, I really appreciate the board considering this. I hope you will support this resolution. We've seen the attacks on the Second Amendment go from nationwide to the state or commonwealth and to the county, and now the attacks have gone local. All these are is an attempt to turn law-abiding citizens into criminals. If resolutions or laws that 
that restrict local concealed carry of law-abiding citizens, I could walk through a neighborhood or drive through a neighborhood for two hours and potentially be a felon in many of those instances. We're, we're attempting to turn law-abiding citizens into criminals, and it's not right. We need to go after the bad guys. The other effects of these local gun control is if I know where I'm unable to carry a firearm, the bad guys are going to know where there's no firearm. And most often, a good guy with a firearm stops a bad guy with a firearm. They know it's a, it's a gun-free zone. I can roam at will and do what I want to. It's not increasing the safety of the population. It's actually putting them more at risk. So as, as people see these patchworks of these gun control zones opening up, they're going to be avoiding. I'm going to avoid driving in those areas because it's not worth the risk to me. So what happens? Those communities lose tax revenue. They lose visitors. It's, it's a lose-lose situation.